study of anatomy can really uh, play a, a, a dramatic role in, in how you try to organize all the complexities of the figure. And, you know, just understanding lights and shadows is perfectly fine. But to know what created those shadows, to understand their direction and thrust, will have a major impact on how efficiently and cleanly you record the form. Uh, it certainly had a big impact on me. And now the reason I studied anatomy was not just because I, you know, had a deep fascination with the, the muscles. I did, but I had actually more of a fascination with uh, the artists uh, who created extraordinary artwork uh, whose work was very much shaped by their knowledge and their studies of anatomy. There's a ninth rib point, and there's the abdomen there, and a rib cage, and a pelvis, and I could be kind of messy with this drawing too, because, you know, just this charcoal, one of the great things about the charcoal is it brushes out very easily. And we'll just get a very nice kind of dramatic turn for the head, and there's the trapezius, and there's the other line of the trapezius there. We try to make this act of drawing very easy, not hard, complicated things, but the shapes are pretty simple. You know, find the outside of the, uh, found just basically the exterior of these shadow patterns, just like I'm sort of doing right there. And then I just fill them in. And the effect is you get a, a figure here, you get a, a, an image. We can sort of see the very top portion of right, uh, right there, and a little uh, depression. That little depression is called an infraclavicular faucet, which is a fancy name for the depression under the clavicle. About at that level is the origin of the muscle, the pubic bone. And then again, the insertion is hidden also. It's hidden under this muscle. Uh, the, the fifth rib is approximately at the nipple line right there. Then it goes the sixth and seventh, and you might actually be able to see a little bit of one of the connections right up there. Because of the three connections at the top, there tends to be a little bit of irregularity with the character of the upper pad right here. Uh, the, the, particularly the top, you'll see some interesting kind of shapes and undulations there. They run obliquely around the rib cage to the back, and they actually take that rib cage and pull it around like that. So when he wants to twist to the right, it's this muscle here that will contract and pull the rib cage around. Some of the back fibers on the other side will help, you know, do a little bit, but mostly it's this side that will work in order to twist the body. You can see this almost donut of highlight gliding around that dimple there. Very interesting area. It's always uh, nice to draw.